Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today I decided I'm going to make this video because I feel like my business at Traders Village is going down the tubes. And the, this is sort of my last resort to possibly get this video to Traders Village Management in Grand Prairie. So I'm reaching out to any of the viewers out there. If you can find a way to get this to the management in Grand Prairie, I'd greatly appreciate it. The problem I have with Traders Village is I've been there since about 2012, 2013. I uh, actually made a pretty good business out there, but for the past year and a half, two and a half years possibly, uh, my business is just going down and down and down. Um, you can walk around and talk to any of the other vendors out there. Everyone's going to say their business is down, but you know what? I'm willing to back mine up by showing you my square reports since I started the market. And I'm at the point that I'm either breaking even, and I mean even as in the same place I was when the year began, or I'm at the point where I'm losing money. So, uh, you know, I cannot continue to operate out there and lose money. That that would be foolish. So my idea for this video is to either give you some new ideas or give me a job, one of the two, because I'm definitely for hire. Um, anyway, uh, the first thing that upset me that actually, dis you know, made me want to make this video, this actually goes back a couple of months, so it's been in my mind for a while. Uh, during COVID, you have an LED reader board out in, in front of the market. And the LED reader board for the longest time, I think they've corrected it now, but for the longest time, it's read, stay safe, stay home. And every time, you know, I passed or even my friends told me about that, I would think to myself, why doesn't it say outside is the safest place to be? I mean, I'm out there every weekend um, working my butt off and I feel like your management or your whoever puts the messages on that sign is working completely against me. So being that I'm paying rent, that bothers me quite a bit. But um, anyway, I'm going to read you a few of the ideas that I have for the flea market. 90% of these ideas are going to cost you absolutely nothing. It just might cause you to give up a parking space here and there. So really, that's costing you nothing if that parking space is sitting empty anyway. Um, I just don't think that the social media department thinks outside the box. And I also don't think the social media department is very social. That's a shame because it's part of their job title. So... Uh, Anyway, I would think, being that you already have that LED sign in place, and it's already there, you could put anything you want on it, when you're having a weekend and you see that there's very low attendance, or by 12.30, 1.30, 2.30 in the afternoon, which is pretty late in the day already, if you see the parking lot is like half empty, put free parking on the LED sign. I mean, what's the big deal? Just type it in, put free parking, let the parking lot fill up, if it helps, great. You know, you, you did what you could. If it doesn't help, well, you know what? At least you tried. But it's better than trying to charge $5 per car when we're sitting there earning no money, at least for me. You know, the, the, the aisles are empty. No one's walking down the aisle. No one wants to spend $5. But if it's free, just people passing by might say, hey, let's go wander around for a little bit. So you would have the opportunity to probably sell some drinks or hot dogs or beer or whatever you sell. And you might even get a new customer out of it, a, a new client that has never been to the market, but they just came in because they saw free parking. So you're really not giving up anything. And if magically the parking lot fills all up, well, you know what? After an hour or two, take the free parking sign down. Just, you know, change the sign and, uh, and, and let people start paying again. But do something. I think the biggest argument I have is that Traders Village appears to do nothing. At least that's what it looks like to us on the outside, or at least to me. Um... Another idea I have would be for like, if you take either the first quarter, the second quarter, third or fourth quarter, and you dedicate it to some certain branch. So on my little paper here, I wrote down the military. If somebody is in the Army, Navy, or Marines, or if they're a vet, let them show their badge. And for the first month or for first quarter, uh, let them get in for free, whether it's for a weekend or whether it's for, you know, the first quarter. And... Everyone else has to pay, but if somebody in that car has that ID badge and they can prove that they were a military vet or still in the service, let them in for free. I mean, my gosh, they serve the country. What are you giving up? $5? So that's not really that big of a deal. Second quarter, you can do it for police and firemen. You would get social media talking, which is what you need. It's costing you nothing. Social media will pretty much carry itself. So I think that's a really good deal. Um, third quarter, you can do something like teachers and hospital workers. You know, they've done their part through COVID. They do their part all year round. They're never recognized. 
why doesn't Traders Village take the opportunity to give up a valuable free parking place and give them free admission as far as parking goes for the weekend or for the month? And for the fourth quarter, you can do grocery store workers and you could do anybody that works at fast food or anyone who has an ID badge from their company. It's not that big of a deal. If it doesn't work after one or two quarters, stop doing it. But you know what? Try something. That's all I'm asking you to do is try. You can also have another weekend that says, show your love for Trader's Village. So let someone wear a Trader's Village hat. Let them wear a Trader's Village shirt. You know, maybe talk about their uh, best Trader's Village experience on camera. Give them a little pass that'll let them park for free for that particular month or that particular weekend. Refund their parking. You're not giving up anything. You haven't spent any money on advertising. You know, you haven't put any billboards or commercials out. Just give up a parking place. So it's not really that big of a deal. <clears throat> you can call Goodwill. You can call the Salvation Army. You can call the food bank. Find out what they're looking for. And then you know what? If they're doing a jacket drive for the winter time, let someone bring in a jacket, donate it into Traders Village, let them park for free. They can do the same thing for shoes. December time, November, December, you can do a toy drive. Somewhere during the year, you can do school supplies, you can do food drive, let somebody bring in a couple of cans of food, donate that, get in for free. And then call the Houston Food Bank, let them pick it up, call Goodwill, let them pick up the shoes, whatever. Or the school supplies, distribute it amongst the different schools. You know, somehow, get creative. My biggest complaint is Traders Village does not think outside the box, which I don't understand. We also seem to have some of the largest events right here in Houston or close to Houston. We have the motorcycle rally that happens in Galveston. Well, why don't you do something close to that same time frame, whether it's right before, right after, everyone's sort of hyped up, do a motorcycle meetup. Open up one of the back pavilions or front pavilion, let people show off their motorcycles, bring new customers to the market. People will come out, see the bikes, the, you know, the, the bikers will walk around. You're getting a brand new customer that you've never had to the flea market. Some of them, it might be a one-time customer. Other people might come back weekend after weekend, but just try something new. Um, we also have the Renaissance Festival. They get hundreds of thousands of people are drawn to that, and everyone seems to like to dress up. They enjoy dressing up. People take pictures with the people that are dressed up. So why doesn't Traders Village do a Renaissance warm-up, maybe a month before, and um, let people, if they're dressed up in costume, and you know people like to dress up because of Comic-Con, let people dress up. Maybe you can get those sort of vendors into the flea market selling to the same people that are coming out to the market all dressed up in their Renaissance gear. So, you know, just try something different. A um, couple of other things I wrote down. Uh, you can have something like uh, a Ho Hawaiian shirt day. If you promote that on social media and people come out wearing Hawaiian shirts, whether it's the whole family, two people in the group, let that car in for free. And so basically everybody at Traders Village will be walking around wearing Hawaiian shirts. Make it fun. Like I feel like you guys don't think outside the box. Um, you can have a team jersey day. Let everyone wear either their, you know, Rockets or Texans, Cowboys jersey, whatever their team is really, whatever their favorite team. Let them wear that jersey and, you know, hat, matching hat or just the hat, whatever you think. Let them in for free. Let them park for that weekend for free. You can also do uh, parking for players. Let the kids wear their, their school jerseys from their school and let them park for free for that day. It's just creating social media buzz. Do something for social media. You're not spending any money. I mean, my gosh, you're giving up parking places and these are all pretty good ideas. So, But someone has to start this. And by the way, like I said, I need a job. So, you know, um, anyway, uh, Another thing I don't expect for you to do, but uh, I, I think that all the big venues out there, whether it is the Renaissance Festival, whether it's Astroworld that doesn't exist anymore, or a Disney theme park, usually those types of places, they have one entrance and it doubles as the exit. I don't expect for you to do that. But if whether it's special events or you just made it your new thing where people have to come in for, through the very front gate and they exit through the back when they leave, Every single person that goes out to Trader's Village will be up and down all the aisles of Trader's Village. They're forced to walk it because it's an entrance and it's an exit. Right now, you have people that park in the back. They never come to the front. As a matter of fact, the front is suffering really, really bad. And um, I think you guys know that. I think it's common knowledge within the flea market. 
from the vendors and the office knows it too. That's why 90% of the food people are located in the back. Why do they locate them in the back? Because all the business is in the back and you know that. So I think that you need to do some things to promote the front or you should lower the, the rent in the front or higher the rent in the back. It's not fair. It's not balanced. I understand that, you know, the events happen in the back because you have the um, pavilion and you have the sprinkler system under that pavilion. Well, you should either put a sprinkler system under the pavilion in the front and alternate the events, or you need to do something completely different to promote the front. It's just not fair. Take the, um, take the produce people or have your social media department go out during the week. I mean, really, what do they do during the week? Right now, there's no events. What in the world could social media be doing during the week? Let them go out to different mom and pop shops, different places. Let them solicit other businesses that might be good for the front of the market. Give them you know, free rent for a weekend. Give them free rent for a month. Let them get started. Let them get established as a business. Let people have a reason to come to the front. We're suffering in the front. That's all I can tell you. And um, as for the free rent and other businesses, <clears throat> I happen to be right on the intersection of D and 2nd. Uh, for anyone who's not familiar with that, that's like in the very front of the market, it's right next to the blue pavilion. Well, from my corner, I can see under the pavilion. And sometimes we see, or I see, new vendors. <clears throat> and when I see that new vendor, I, I can look at their merchandise and their table, and I can say, oh, they're only gonna be here today. Even if they paid for both days, I know they're only gonna be there the one day because they don't know how to set up, they don't have good signage, and they haven't learned what to say to the customers. And I understand that that is not Traders Village management's responsibility. But someone that's in business, they just went in business, they're excited about their product, you know, they want to do good, but they haven't learned what to say yet. Sometimes you think you know what to say until you start getting customers' re responses, and then you have to sort of like tweak it. So <clears throat> why don't you run a sale on spaces to fill up the front? Buy two weekends, get one free. You're getting paid for two weekends in a row, first of all, you're giving that vendor an opportunity to make more money because you know what's gonna happen, usually what does happen currently, is they work one weekend or one day and they go home and all their friends and family knew that they were going out there and they say, well, how did you do this weekend at the flea market? Oh, I didn't sell anything. I hate that place. I'm not going back. There's no business out there. So slowly, 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 you guys are gonna have a really crappy reputation. And reputations matter over time. If you don't think so, then just look at the common market off of West Park and 59. They have a very crappy reputation and it turned into a really crap flea market. And why did it do that? I mean, you know, they have a, they sell crap merchandise. It became all garage sale stuff. I'm sure somebody has some new merchandise out there, but even people in town don't even know about the common market. And they did that to themselves. I'm not talking bad about them, but Traders Village seems to be doing that to themselves also. And it's a shame, but eventually that's gonna catch up to you. And once that catches up to you, you're just gonna have another crap flea market. And a lot of people don't wanna to go to those places. They don't even feel safe. I've posted Traders Village events on our Nextdoor website, like if you're familiar with Nextdoor. And um, that's the type of replies I get is, I don't feel safe out there. I'm not going out there. That's a trashy place out there. I never, I, actually, I've never seen a good reply to my post. It's always been a negative reply and that's why I quit posting. So I, that's pretty bad. So, but you don't realize that because you still seem to rent your spaces and you still seem to get customers, but the quality of those customers is is declining. And that's why those customers are not spending money, but at least they're not spending it in the front of the market because we're suffering. So um, anyway, guys, that's uh, pretty much my thoughts. You know, it's a lot to say. You know, I know I've talked like 15, 16 minutes, but at the same time, um, you know, you guys have to do something because right now we're just suffering. I know I'm suffering. So I ask anyone who watches this video, even if you're just a customer, find a way to forward this or to get this to Traders Village Management in Grand Prairie. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate your support and um, hope to see you at the market someday. Bye.